Hi, it's so good to be with you again this week. I really enjoy getting to share God's Word with you. I uh, hope it's a blessing. I want to say something that helps you. Uh, you know, I hope all's going well with you, but I, know, I do know that we have an enemy, and he goes around trying to, trying to get us all the time. He's trying to cause you problems. He's trying to steal your joy and, and, and kill your dreams. and just He doesn't want us to walk in what God has for us. But you know what? The Bible tells us that God's given us everything we need to stand strong. He's given us this word, and this word is powerful. It'll defeat the devil every time. And not only that, but he's given the, us the authority to speak this word in this name of Jesus, his son, that name that's above every name. And, and if that isn't enough, he's given us the Holy Spirit to live inside of us to show us what to say and how to say it. Wow. You know, the devil just doesn't stand a chance against us if we know who we are and know what we're doing and know what the Word says. I want to share part of a message here with you right now where I'm talking about standing strong and just let the Holy Spirit minister to you for a few minutes and I'll be back and tell you bye. Praise the Lord. Let me read you something out of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. Starting with, I just want verse 8, but I'm going to start with verse 6. Therefore humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So resist him steadfast in the faith. Holy Spirit, uh, help me today. Help me just say what you want to say. And God, I ask that you use something that I say to stir our hearts and, and just, to, just to pull us closer to our Lord. And we give you praise and glory for that. And we love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, precious Heavenly Father. Praise God. Isn't he good? <laughs> you know, it, it would be good if uh, we didn't have battles. But, you know, we all have some battles, don't we, from time to time. I know nobody's had any lately, but sometimes we have them. And, uh, uh, you know, a, a life of faith isn't a life that's free from difficulties. Uh, in, in fact, if you decide to live for the Lord and live, live faith, then often it seems the exact opposite. In fact, Psalms 34, 19, David said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, or the saved, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I like that last part. Not too crazy about the first part. But we all have some battles and we're all going to face some things. So what Peter says is, whenever these things happen in your life, give it to God. Give it to God. Don't, don't panic. Don't lose your head. Keep your senses about you. Don't overreact. And resist him with your faith. Resist. Stand strong against him. And we can stand strong against him because of Jesus. Uh, you know, the truth is the enemy's out to get us all. He'll do anything and everything he can to keep you from walking in the place where God has his blessing for you. He'll do everything he can think of to keep us from walking in all that God has for us. And, and he'll, he'll try to get you discouraged. He'll try to, he'll, he'll, he'll try to sidetrack you. Uh, he'll try to get your eyes off Jesus. He'll, he'll, do, he'll do everything he can to get you to quit. To get you, the only way that, 
the only way that he can stop God's blessings from coming to you, you know, God's not just sitting there waiting for when we ask him to bless us. You got to understand this. God's throwing that out all the time. It's a constant flow of love from God. That grace and that mercy is constant flow. It's constantly having, having coming to us, and, 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 and we, know, we don't have to beg for it. It's there. All we got to do is be in the right place and reach out and grab it when he throws it by us. And so the enemy will do everything he can to get you out of place. We talked about that last week a little bit. And if you weren't here last week, when I looked into the camera, I didn't have you on my mind when I said you're supposed to be here. But seriously, he'll do everything he can to get you out of the flow, to get you, he'll do everything. How does he do that? He distracts us, he discourages us, he gets us mad at each other, he gets our feelings hurt, he does all this stuff that, that, that is supposed to only work on baby Christians, but it all, it works on all of us. <laughs> And he'll do everything he can to get you to quit, to get you to not be where you're supposed to be. Hey, it's important for you to be where you're supposed to be. God puts you in a church. He puts you here so that you could grow and mature. And so that, that, that it didn't say you wouldn't have hard times and you wouldn't have things that rub you wrong. But you know, the truth is, some of us have some rough edges that need to be rubbed off. And so he might be using that person you're having all that difficulty with just to rub your rough edges off. But what we've gotten the habit of doing, Christians, we tuck tail and run. Well, I'll just go somewhere else. Well, I'll just do something different. Well, if that's... Folks, that's the devil, and he'll do everything he can to keep you from doing and being where you're supposed to be. Now, I just, I just wanted to stress that. Uh, he's out to get us. Uh, he wants to get us out of place. He'll do everything he can think of. Uh, but Paul tells us in uh, Romans 8, that, you know, usually, usually when I'm in the middle of a problem, I don't always know what to do. I don't always know how to pray. Have you ever been there? I mean, I, that's, that's, I spend most of my time just praying in the Spirit because I don't know how to pray. But I can pray in tongues, and, and somehow, before I get done, it gets connected. And I know what I'm supposed to do. But Paul said in Romans 8 that we have the Holy Spirit. He's there helping us with our weaknesses, helping us in our times of weakness. And even when... When we don't know what to pray or what to do, he's interceding for us. He's there. He's, 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 he, he searches our hearts. He knows everything about us, and he knows everything about the will of God. And he searches our heart and our minds, and then he intercedes for us in the will of God. In other words, he prays and seeks. He knows, he knows my flaws. He knows everything about me. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to conform me into the image of Jesus. He's trying to pull me closer to God so he knows everything, so he knows the will of God. And, and he's constantly working to draw me that direction. And so most of the time, I don't even know which direction I'm going but I can rest assured that the Holy Spirit's pulling me the right direction. But he's there. He knows our thing. He prays for us. He, he, he prays for us in line with the will of God. And because of that, because we love him, because I want the will of God in my life, he causes everything that happens to turn out for my good. You get it? We just like to quote that scripture. But it, it works out for our good if, if we're following the leading, if we're going after our call. God, I want what you have for me. I love you. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll hear, you'll hear my words and do them. So, so I just thought about it. I thought, wow. What an advantage we have. 
We have a supernatural power that helps us to stand strong. When I don't feel strong and when I don't look strong, I can be strong anyway because of Him. And I can just back off and say, Holy Spirit, I'm just trusting you, and I can just pray. And, 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 and you know, if it says that the Holy Spirit's praying, I just was thinking about this, that He's praying with, with utterances that can't be understood. He's, he's, he's groaning. And, 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 you know, when we're praying in the Spirit, we, we're praying in tongues. We don't know what we're saying. And I just got to thinking this. If we're praying that way, and he's praying that way, and it pulls us, man, something's got to rub off on us. God's here, and he's, you know, something, something's got to rub off. And that's why in the process of that, you always find your answer. You always find that way of escape. You always find the plan on what to do. What a deal. What a deal. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 10 that, that we're in a war. We're in a spiritual war. Say, so, well, Hank, we, we, we know all this. I know we know all this, but what some of us need to do is some of us need to mature so we can fight the battle. huh? So we can fight the battle for this church, so we can fight the battle for our families, so we can fight the battle for our brothers and sisters. Because there shouldn't be any one of us go down without somebody standing there picking us up, fighting in our behalf. And the Holy Spirit is trying to mature us. That's just a nice word for grow up. I like mature better, don't you? If he says, he says, Hank, I want you to mature. He says, Hank, I want you to grow up. I like mature better, don't you? Anyway, we're in a spiritual war. But we don't have to fight this spiritual war with physical things. We don't have to have the ideas. We don't have to come up with the plan. We don't have to know how to physically do it. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual. They're mighty. They're, they're mighty in God, and they will pull down the strongholds in our life that the enemy pulls us into he's always there to lie to you he's always there to deceive you he's always there to trick you and if you think you don't ever get tricked you're just the fact that you thought that proves that you're already tricked but those weapons are mighty and they pull down strongholds and those strongholds get in our minds and make us think the different than we're supposed to think and that's how he gets us is through the avenue of our mind doesn't mean we shouldn't use our mind and doesn't mean that our mind isn't important because God created our brain and our mind so that it could work in conjunction with our spirit and it could figure out and it could accomplish what our spirit says to do. Because you make up your mind about something, you're going to do it. So if we make up our mind about what our spirit's trying to tell us to do, then we're going to do it. Well... All those emotions, all those things, they aren't bad things. But that's how the enemy uses to pull us away from God. But we can use all those things. I don't know about you, but I got pretty emotional just a few minutes ago. Huh? When we were singing and hearing about how much he loves us. And I don't know about you, but emotions are good. I got pretty emotional. Anyway, he says that we are to... Cast down imaginations or all those arguments, all those high things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. He says we're to bring all of our thoughts into subjection, into obedience. Bring all of our thoughts into the obedience of Christ. Now, now he tries to, the enemy tries to trip us up, but if he can't get our thinking, then he can't get us. And what, so, so what, what Paul's saying here is, he's saying, push those wrong thoughts away. Don't spend time meditating on it. I know they did you wrong, but if you keep thinking about that, you're going to be so mad after a couple of days thinking about that that you just want to punch them. 
And this is the thing, when you give in to that spirit and you want to punch them, somebody's probably going to come up and punch you. I don't know about you, but man, this face is too old to get hit too much, man. Huh? I don't think it can take punches like it used to. Hear what I'm saying. I'm to push that stuff away. And I'm to bring my thinking in line with the Word. I'm to think about the things of God. Think about Christ. Think about His will for my life. I'm to stand strong for the Lord. And the thing is, he's made it where we can do that even when we don't physically feel strong or mentally feel strong. We can still cast those cares on him. We can still trust him. And we can still stand and resist and not be moved. See, faith is, not, is, is to not be moved. Faith is, I don't care what you say. I'm not changing my mind. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care who does what to me. I'm not going to get out of place. I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. Well, if I'm supposed to, you know, you can't just stop thinking about something. You know, have you ever thought something wrong? How many ever thought something wrong? Good grief, I thought y'all all fell asleep on me. Give me, give me a heart attack here. How many, how many ever said, I'm not going to think about that anymore? And how many know when you said, I'm not going to think about that anymore, it made you think about it more? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what Paul's meaning here. You can't, you can't just not think about stuff. You've got to replace it with something else. So if it's the negative stuff there, you've got to find some positive to replace it with. If you're gonna if you're gonna bring all your thoughts into obedience to Christ, then then you you need to know what obedience is. You need to know what the word is. Are you with me? Uh, the word, the word of God is our foundation. Now now if we if we start listing, and I've heard sermons and I've preached sermons, and we start listing all the spiritual weapons that we have. We always have the word in there somewhere uh, you know what i'm saying i need to read my bible more well hold it we got this out of out of out of out of uh, proportion out of out of line here the word is our foundation huh? the word is my core the word has to be my life it has to be first place. Uh, if my life is not built on the rock, the word, then I can't stand. What did Jesus say? If you hear what I say and you do what I said, you'll be like a rock and when the storms of life come, they won't be able to knock your house down. Do you understand the Word is not just an option? Reading the Word is not something I do every three or four days if I think about it. I, I want you to, I, I just, I want to belabor this a little bit. Because the Word of God, if I can put it in there, and if I can get it in there, it drowns out everything else that tries to come in. The word is, it has to be so dominant in my life that it's the first thing I think. The Bible says, John said that Jesus was the word. Said he was the word. Said he was the word of God in the flesh. Well, now, 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 let me ask you something. How many has ever been reading and you just really don't know exactly how what that means or how you were supposed to how you're supposed to interpret that and you know how many know some things we got so many interpretations from so many different teachers that nobody knows what to do 
Huh? I talked to somebody here a while back, and they said, you know, I want to be saved, and I want to live for God, but I listen to this guy, and I listen to this guy talk and tell, tell his interpretation. I listen to this guy. He said, he said I, I, want to, I want to be saved. I want to live for God, but I don't know which one to believe. And I don't want to do all this and then be wrong. We've all felt that way sometimes. Well, you want to know right what's how to how to how to interpret the scripture? Look at Jesus. If he did it, it's scripture. If he didn't do it, it isn't. That's about as simple as you can get. So 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 he is the word and so so Paul said we the weapons of our warfare are mighty we pull down strongholds with it the word is our is our weapon everything else is part of that If Jesus uh, if Jesus was the word then how did he operate Because how he operated is how I need to operate Huh? If I want to be where I'm supposed to be, if I want to do what I'm supposed to do, if I want to be close to God, how many think Jesus was close to God? And then he left, and when he left, he prayed a prayer, and he said, Hank, he said, God, let, let, let Hank be one with us just like you and I are one. Let him be one with us too, and, and let us all be one, and let us all be, a, let us all be an organism, a function that, that moves on the face of the earth and gets something accomplished for the kingdom of God. Well, I don't know. I, how, how, how did he operate? How do we handle the life and the things of life? I've got a few scriptures written down here, but how did Jesus operate? Now, now he's the word, and, and we all agree that if, if, we, if we watch him, we'll know the word because he operated the word but what made it work let me read just a few scriptures here john 5 30 he says i can of my own self do nothing not i won't but i can't this is jesus he said i can't do it by myself john 8 26 he says that and the Father that sent me is true, and I speak to, you, to the world those things which I have heard him say. He says, I can't do this by myself, so I say what I hear Father say. Verse... Uh, <clears throat> John 8, 28 says, I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Hmm. And then I love John 14, 10. He says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but it's the Father that dwells in me. He does the work. What's he saying? He's saying, I'm here and I'm operating. And I'm walking through here. But I'm only saying what I hear Father say. I'm only, I'm only telling you what I hear him telling me to tell you. I'm here operating. And because that word, his word is in me. Do you think Jesus just waited till he was 30 years old and then just went out and started preaching? He spent 30 years studying the Word. When he was 12, they found him. They didn't know where he was. Went back and found him in the temple. He said, didn't you know I'd have to be about my father's business? And he got grounded and all kinds of things for doing that. But, but it, it, he didn't stop. That wasn't a little instance. That was showing us a glimpse of his life. He spent his whole life getting the Word in him so he could hear Father. Well, now do you understand what he said? He said, let me get to another scripture here. He said, he said, I don't do it. It's this word of Father that's in me that's making it work. You got that? 
See, is the, is the word important or not? See, the word is what sustains me. Not the anointing. Not, the, not all the other stuff, the good stuff. It's the word. Because when all my emotions and all the outside appearances and everything else doesn't stand, this word will still work in my life. I don't have to see it. I don't have to feel it. I don't have to believe it. I I don't have to hear it. I just know because God said it, it will stand. Well, so so he said, uh, (coughs) he said it's, you understand why he was the word? He said it's the word in me that does work. It's the Father in me. It's what he says. It's what he's taught me, in me, that's making all this stuff happen. Did stuff happen wherever Jesus went? Yeah. Well, now, 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 now let's carry this thing on. Well, how does that relate to me? How does that apply to me? Well, he said in John chapter 15, 16, he said, he said, now, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. In other words, I still have some things to say to you, but you wouldn't understand it if I told you. But when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, when he comes... He'll lead you and guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak whatever he hears. Whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. And he'll glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and and declare it to you. And all the things the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say again, he'll take what's mine and give it to you, declare it to you. Now, we we quote that and, and, and... the Holy Spirit's leading us and guiding us into all truth. How does he do that? Well, he does it. He'll guide us into all truth. He does it by speaking the authority of God in our heart. He won't speak on his own authority, but he'll, he'll speak whatever he hears, he'll speak. Jesus said, I still got some stuff to tell you, but you won't understand it now, but you will understand it after he comes. So so I'm going to, this guy that's coming, this part of us that's coming is going to lead you and guide you into all truth because he's going to tell you what he hears. I hope I said something there that helped you. You know, I, I know I say this every week, but I really think that this message, if you could hear the whole message, it would really help you. Uh, you can go online to our website, cccjoplin.com. You can download all the messages free there. Uh, or if you want, we'll just give us a call. I'll send you a CD. I know CDs are kind of outdated a little bit, but some of us still use them, and we'd be happy to send you one free of charge. I, I just want you to hear the message. I just want you to hear what the Holy Spirit would say to you. You know, I just want to be a blessing to you. And I'm tired of the devil getting away with everything that he's getting away with in our lives. You know, I don't want to leave today without giving you an opportunity if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life to do that. So if you don't know right now that you're saved, you don't know that you're right with God, pray this prayer with me. Just say, Father, I want to be saved. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Save me right now. I give you my life. I want to live it for you, and I ask you to help me do that. And I pray this in your precious name, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer, uh, give us a call. I'd like to send you some information, help you get on your way with the Lord. Even if you didn't pray it, call. One of our operators would be happy to pray it with you because we want you to know the goodness of God in your life. Hey, it's important. Listen, I hope you'll spend some time this week studying the Word and reading the Word. And uh, this is Pastor Hank. Until next week, let me just say, I love you. But more important than that, God loves you.